Welcome back to Daily Reddit Stories. Let's start with the story. My sister cheated her way through two marriages. Now she's ruined my relationship and I'm kicking them both out. My older sister recently divorced her second husband. Her marriage didn't even last a year. It was a messy divorce. And she wasn't able to claim anything because of the prenup. Her first marriage lasted two years and both of them cheated on each other constantly. They both didn't have much property or money, so there was nothing to claim. I cannot say the same for her second marriage though. They hadn't dated long but he was genuinely a nice guy. He had taken her back even after she cheated on him the first two times, maybe more. He seemed like he was in love with her and wanted to make it work. My older sister was spoiled. Our parents pampered her too much and she had been hand-fed all her life. She had taken advantage of her second ex-husband and our parents wonder why she got divorced. They never corrected her or reprimanded her for anything. It was a nuisance. I, on the other hand, got the silent treatment if I did anything wrong or if they thought I did anything wrong. They would not talk to me for days. At first it used to bother me, but then I gave back what I received. They didn't care about me so I wouldn't care about them. I went about my day normally unbothered. I learned to parent myself. At least I had the sense to. Now since she divorced she has asked to move in with me. I refused. I told her to move in with our parents instead. It is their golden child. They should take care of her. I was living with my boyfriend of one year. He had moved in with me two months ago. He didn't own a house. I started investing at a young age and made a few very good ones. Hence I was able to own the house and afford my lifestyle. I didn't indulge though. I had a very minimalistic taste. Now my parents called me up which they rarely do and asked me to let my sister move in. I told them no. That pissed them off. I laughed when they tried to tell me that she was going through a rough time. I told them I wasn't the one who told her to cheat. Their horrified gasps were hilarious. It was as if they couldn't believe their golden girl could do such a thing. I hung up on them. Now my boyfriend and I were good but I wasn't feeling the passion. It was a dull relationship and I made him aware of how I felt. He said that he didn't want to break up and that we could try doing more stuff together to strengthen our connection. I didn't think it was going to work but I gave it a chance. This conversation was fresh and took place around 15 days ago. Two days after my conversation with my parents my sister shows up at my door. I wasn't at the house so my boyfriend let her in. She had come with her bags packed and that idiot let her in. I was pissed when I came back home. I didn't like her if it wasn't already obvious. My parents favored her over me and I had to go through a lot of shit because of her. I had tried to build a relationship with her, but she stabbed me in the back. One time I confided in her about my crush. We were in high school. She hyped me up, telling me to confess to him and got me all excited. The next day I saw her making out with him in front of the class that I and he were in. I cried that day. I went home and told my parents about it, and they told me to get over my childish crush because it could be something serious for my sister. I told them she didn't even know who he was until yesterday when I confided in her about him. That stunned them for a second. She didn't even apologize about it. She was a narcissist. She instead tried getting more of a reaction out of me. My parents were still on her side. At that point I had given up on her. I moved on and did my own thing. Even if she asked what I was doing or if she wanted to make conversation with me, I didn't indulge her. There were quite a few incidents even before this crush thing. One time I wanted to go on a school trip with my friends. I asked her if she was going but she said no. So I asked her if she could convince our parents to let me go on the trip. It was a bit expensive and they didn't usually let me go on any such trips. She on the other hand went on every single trip. It sucked. My parents did say yes to the trip but not to me, to her. I really wanted to go on that trip. I asked them myself and they said that my sister was going and they could only afford to pay for one kit. Now back to the situation. I didn't know why she wanted to stay with me. What was she thinking? So when I came home my first instinct was to kick her out. She started crying and begging me to let her stay for a few days. I didn't feel pity for her. She hadn't even regretted cheating on either of her husbands or her other previous boyfriends. She laughed with her friends about it telling them that they were so dumb. There was something seriously wrong with her. I had heard this conversation when we were over at my parents' house for Thanksgiving. All our relatives were going to be there so I had to join in too. The woman knew nothing about loyalty or love. I wasn't about to let her into my house much less my life. My boyfriend on the other hand stopped me saying that she was my sister and that I should let her stay for a few days. I told him that she could stay with our parents too. They would welcome her with open arms. She started her fake crying again. I told her if she continued this I would call security on her. That shut her up real quick. My boyfriend took me aside and tried to calm me down. I was still angry though. I asked him why he let her in. He told me he let her in because she was my sister. He proceeded to convince me to give her a chance and to let her stay for a while. 
I looked at her and asked why she wanted to stay with me. She told me she missed me. I can't believe I almost bought it for a second. I just wanted to have dinner, take a bath and go to sleep. I was tired, so I told her she could stay here for three to four days and then she had to be on her way out. She tried huffing and puffing but I told her she could get out now if she wanted. I didn't trust her. She was here because she missed me. I knew her inside and out. She wanted something. We didn't interact much as I had to go to work but on the second day I came home earlier. It was the weekend and I had finished off early. I opened the door to my house. No one was there. I called out but received no response. Even if my boyfriend wasn't there, where was she? He usually came home earlier. I called him later but got no response. I didn't worry much but then it was almost midnight and I had no idea where either of them was. I called my parents and asked them if my sister was there and they said no. I waited for them and around 3 a.m. I heard the door opening. She didn't have a key so it had to be my boyfriend. The lights were off so he didn't think I was there. I heard footsteps come in behind him and when they were near enough, I turned the lights on. I could hear them giggling while trying to be silent. They flinched, startled. They were hanging on to each other, standing there with their clothes crumpled. It looks like my boyfriend and sister had a fun night. He had hickeys all over his neck and they very clearly weren't from me. I just stared at them. My sister didn't even look embarrassed. I hadn't expected this from him. The next thing I said was, get out. My sister laughed and told me to get out. I was surprised. Whose house did she think this was? She continued by answering my unvoiced question. She said that it was my boyfriend's house and that I had no right to tell them to get out. He just kept staring at the ground embarrassed. At least they weren't that drunk. I just started laughing. My sister thought this was his house. No wonder she wanted to come over and stay here. This was hilarious to me. My ex, whom I wasn't going to take back, started apologizing. He tried to stumble his way toward me, telling me that it was a mistake and that it wouldn't happen again. I knew my feelings were fading for him, but I was still hurt. I didn't want to cry, but I was upset. I wanted to scream at them. My crying would only satisfy my sister. So after I finished my laughing fit, I calmly told her that this house was owned by me. I proceeded to click a picture of them and immediately sent it on to the family group. This made her nervous. She asked me what I was doing, and I told her to check the family group. While she did that, I called security. Both of them panicked. My sister's expression of horror when she looked at her phone was so satisfying. My boyfriend tried to speak, but I cut him off, telling him that if it wasn't already clear, we were over. I told him to pack up his shit and get out or I would get someone to throw it out the next day. My sister started crying. She could act. She profusely apologized, telling me it was a mistake. I couldn't take her bullshit. I told her that I knew it wasn't a mistake. I told her she was a gold-digging whore and a walking STD. But I was angry now. I yelled at my ex, telling him that I didn't know he was such a big man whore. I questioned what he was thinking. Out of all the people, he cheated on me with my sister. He got teary-eyed. He started apologizing again, telling me he loved me and that she showed up where he worked and seduced him, that it meant nothing. I told him, yeah, it meant nothing. This relationship meant nothing. Security came up, and I pushed them aside and let them in. I told security to kick those two out, as they weren't leaving on their own. My sister started screaming and begging. He, on the other hand, gave up. I shouted out that they could both enjoy their romance on the streets, homeless. One year, relationship down the drain. I shut the door and took a deep breath. I convinced myself that he meant nothing to me and tried to go to sleep. The next day, my parents called me. I didn't want to answer, but I thought, let's get it over with. They started ranting that I should never have sent that picture to the group and that she was lonely. That's why she did that. I told them they were pathetic parents and hung up. What I did do was record the conversation. I once again sent it to the group. The group was already filled with texts questioning my sister about how she could do that to me. This recording would blow it over. They deserved it. Let everybody know their true colors. I blocked my parents, ex and sister. My parents tried to do damage control on the group, but it didn't work. Everybody was furious with them. I was getting my revenge. A day later, my sister's second ex-husband reached out to me. He was still in the family group. He apologized for what I went through. I don't know if I want to get even more involved in my sister's drama. Update 1. One week later, my ex showed up to collect his things. I had already packed it up and left it in the lobby. I didn't want to see him or talk to him. The group is still blowing up. My parents left the group but were added back. The rest of our family wasn't done with them. Some of them even apologized to me for not noticing this behavior before. My sister was getting dragged by all our cousins. Everybody had started speaking up about her behavior. My so-called parents and sister deserved this treatment. They wouldn't live this down for the rest of their lives. NTA, you're strong AF. If it were me in your position, 
I would have started crying when they walked in. The audacity they had to walk into your house after they hooked up. A holes. They deserve to be on the streets. Next story. I, female 32, have been married to my husband, male 37, for a year. Before I met him, I started a small business which I eventually grew to a point of making a nice income, a really nice one. I'm by no means rich but I'm well off. My husband on the other hand makes a minimum wage working at a shop. It never bothered me and we combine our finances. Unfortunately he's been spending irresponsibly which has become a problem recently but this is not about that. He invited his mates for a Christmas breakfast with her girlfriend's wife and we saw them this morning. All his mates are from his job so earn a similar level. I didn't even think about it until it hit me when they started commenting on our house and pointing things out. Some comment of the wives were not so nice. I don't think I was meant to hear them, such as, I'm showing off or it's too flashy or money don't buy you taste, said when looking at my green couch which is perfectly tame and normal. During breakfast, some of his mates had a few drinks and not even wine. They had some lager and got giddy, started asking how much things cost a tetter. I dodged the questions but my husband has been answering them truthfully and eventually he told them exactly how much I make. I was furious. I'm very private about my finances. Not even my mom knows how much exactly I make and here he is telling people I barely know my financial details. When they left I blew up at him about that and the lager I didn't know he had, served with breakfast and having drunk people over at 11am. He's saying that I'm uptight and should loosen up a bit. That it's not a good look and I should stop looking down at them because they work in the supermarket. I'm not. I asked if that's how he felt and he said no but they felt that I was showing off with being all dressed up. One of the wives showed up in PJ pants. He started going off and I decided that I've had enough. He was drunk and we wouldn't have any discussion. I'm still angry. I told him I'm not going to his mom's Christmas dinner because Kay didn't want to show off and stayed home. He's still at his mom's. Absolutely wasted and I'm just getting angrier and angrier and need a reality check. Am I the a-hole for getting angry for him telling people how much I make? So your husband is spending irresponsibly when you have combined finances, letting people insult you inside your own home, getting drunk by 11 a.m., sharing your private information with people you barely know, ghosting you and running to his mommy's house. NTA. It's only been a year up. This is going to get worse. Consider your boundaries and then stick to them or you'll eventually start to feel guilty about being you. No one should have to deal with that from their life partner. Also, FWIW green couches are awesome. Next story. My wife, 38 female, and I, 43 male, are hosting Christmas for the first time in our new home. Ever since I met my wife, we have always done Christmas at her mom's house. My wife's brother, 33 male, has a psychiatric disability, had to Google the proper term so I don't get downvoted to hell, and has 247 caretakers. He's been hit and miss for Christmas, and we don't know if he's coming till the morning of. Every year it's tradition to have a prime rib dinner with the family and my mother-in-law always buys a six to seven pound prime rib, which gets devoured so my wife and I never get to take any leftovers home. This year, since my wife and I are hosting, we decided to buy an eight pound prime rib so that we had enough to feed five people, my wife and I, mother-in-law, and her husband and brother-in-law, along with having enough for leftovers. We made the usual side dishes and made just enough for everyone, but made extra mashed potatoes because I got a new ricer for Christmas that I was way too excited to use. This info is irrelevant. Just wanted to brag about my awesome ricer. After dinner, my brother-in-law breaks out two dinner plates from his backpack and starts dishing up the rest of the leftovers. Stunned, I asked him, what you doing, bud? To which he replies, packing up leftovers for and his caretakers. I look at my wife, she looked dumbfounded. I look at my mother-in-law and she quickly responds with, Don't worry, he does this every year. My wife and I had no idea this was a normal arrangement or were informed ahead of time to make extra. I stopped brother-in-law and told him that the leftovers were for my wife and I. We didn't make enough to send him home with leftovers. Brother-in-law got upset and threw literally the leftover prime rib back onto the cutting board that he had loaded onto the plate, which was all of it, pouted to his mom and then stomped off to the car for the rest of the evening. Mother-in-law and husband left about 20 minutes later, skipping opening presents to take brother-in-law back to his apartment. My wife ended up getting an earful a few hours later from her mom saying that we were rude to not feed his caretakers and that they were expecting Christmas leftovers like years before. I fired back, she was on speaker, and told her it's not our responsibility to feed his caretakers when we were given no heads up beforehand. Had they mentioned something, we'd have gladly bought a larger prime rib and made extra food to send home with brother-in-law. But since nobody said anything to us, we had no idea this was a thing in the first place. Mother-in-law called my wife and me selfish H and hung up the phone. A-I-T-A, 
for not sending our leftovers home with brother-in-law for his caretakers? Update. My wife and I decided that it was a leftover night. We planned on taking the leftover prime rib, warming it up in gravy, and then smothering the herb in fused mashed potatoes I made. Wife opened the fridge, grabbed the prime rib, then went for the mashed potatoes and gravy, only to realize it wasn't in the fridge. She hollers over at me and asks if I ate them. I tell her nope. Long story short, she texted her mom and asked if they took the mashed potatoes and gravy, and she said, yep, her reasoning, just make more. You guys kept the prime rib so we took the mashed potatoes and gravy. I don't care that they took the mashed potatoes and gravy, but the fact that they didn't ask or say anything is frustrating. AF. NTA. And what entitlement. I don't know why you would be expected to feed his caregivers. Also, he ruined Christmas. I bet your mashed potatoes came out amazing with the ricer though. Next story I 24F have an older sister 33F and I had my two sons when I was 15 and 18 with my ex-boyfriend. My sister was already out of the house when I had my youngest, so she didn't help with childcare, not that I expected her to. My ex is very involved, and we share equal co-parenting responsibilities without needing to go to court. We do one month on, one month off, and since we live in the same city, this doesn't affect their schooling. During the month they're with their dad, I still see them whether through taking them to the park, movie nights, or sleepovers. We also FaceTime every night. This setup gives me time to relax and live my life, which other moms sometimes judge me for making me feel guilty for enjoying my free time. Recently, my sister had her first baby, and while we weren't super close before, the baby brought us together. Sadly, she and her husband separated a few months after the baby's birth, leaving her to raise him alone. It took her months to find a job, but she finally did, though childcare in our area costs $2,000 a month, which she can't afford. So, either the paternal grandmother or I watch her son during the week. I work from home. And my boys are in school, so watching my nephew a few days a week doesn't interfere with my routine. However, last Thursday, when my sister dropped off my nephew, she forgot his diaper bag and went downstairs to get it. She left her phone behind, and it rang it was our mom calling, so I answered. While on the call, a message notification popped up on her phone that said something like, It's crazy how she can watch my son but doesn't care about her own. I could never go to Jamaica for a man's birthday instead of being with my kids. Deadbeat moms are worse than dads. I was shocked and took a screenshot. My boyfriend's birthday is next weekend, and we're going to Jamaica. It's during my son's time with their dad, so I didn't see an issue. But seeing my sister talking about me like that hurt. I kept my cool when she came back, but later, when she returned to pick up her son, I confronted her. At first she denied the message, but when I showed her the screenshot, she said it was out of context. I asked her to show me the full conversation, and she refused. She apologized but it didn't feel sincere, so I asked her to leave. After she left, I called her to let her know I wouldn't be watching my nephew anymore. I didn't want to tell her in person, because I knew she'd try to guilt trip me with tears. She sent over 50 texts, apologizing, saying she regrets it, and that she needs me to watch her son since his other grandma can't do it every day. She said if she loses her job, she won't be able to afford her bills. I haven't replied. But now our mom and cousins are blowing up my phone, calling me a huge asshole and telling me to change my mind and accept her apology. I feel used and disrespected but also a bit guilty because I know she really needs the childcare. Thanks for watching till the end. Wishing you an awesome day. Feel free to drop a comment if you've got more to share. I'd love to hear from you.